One of the academic institutions that I had the combined fortune and misfortune to teach at is Fayetteville State University down in Fayetteville, North Carolina, not to be confused with the one in Arkansas, also Fayetteville State University. And I got hired in 2008 at uh, the rate of assistant professor. I was brought in on a tenure track line. And I, I, the reason I had to get into that is my prison teaching job had ended because the state of Indiana had phased out upper level, you know, college, liberal arts, prison education. That's a whole other story. And so I had to get on the job market rather quickly at a rather inopportune time. And, and Fayetteville State University was the best place that made me an offer. So I moved from Indiana all the way down to North Carolina, um, leaving my, my family behind and getting a little apartment. And when I arrived there, I found one of the most dysfunctional places that I've ever taught in or been to. I've found more since, but Fayetteville State University was kind of in a mess. The chancellor was in the process of being fired. We showed up and we didn't even have contracts. And one of the things that was part of the general dysfunction there was we, we knew faculty were expected to keep office hours and we didn't have offices. And there was like no updates or signs about when we would actually get offices or how this was going to work. And the old timers would all give us the same old line of, oh, don't worry, you know, the institution will take care of you sooner or later. And it was, it was you know, associated with this sort of Southern, everything works out if you let it go nice and slow and don't rock the boat kind of, kind of old boy thing. And those of us who were coming in from other places were like, no, we need no offices. You said we'd have offices. Uh, where are they? Get working on this. And eventually they did put us into offices because what they did is they took an old dorm where there was already some things on the first floor, some administrative offices. And then they took all the new faculty hires or at least as many of them as they could and they put us into what were old dorm rooms in this long corridor on the second floor. And actually that wasn't too bad because then, you know, I had my own office, it had outlets, it actually had a sink in it and a closet, which was kind of nice. So now, you know, things are starting to look up, you know, having a sink meant that I could actually like make my own food there because I had a hot pot and, you know, having a closet meant that I could actually put like dress shirts and suits and ties and, you know, dress shoes in there. And then I could, I could walk to campus, which was about three miles. And, you know, I'd be all hot and sweaty because it's Fayetteville, North Carolina. So it's always hot there, except for, you know, a few months in the winter. And even then it's, you know, very uh, rainy and, and humid. And then I would change into my work clothes and teach my classes and go to my meetings and stuff like that. And then I would, I would walk home from there. And so that was kind of nice. And I, I actually spent quite a lot of time in my office and I got to know the people in the hallway. And it was fun because they were from different disciplines. There was me and the other new philosophy hire, uh, Michelle Carpenter, who was next door to me. And then there were some English people and communication people and nursing people and all sorts of other things as well. I think there might've been a history person in there. And so we'd, we'd all get to, to know each other. And I, I like that, that sort of thing. So anyway, long story short, I'm now about a year in and I've got this kind of MO of you know, doing things on campus and then going home from there and spending a lot of time using my office as a home base. And I'm there on a Tuesday or Wednesday night and there's gonna be a concert performance. One of the things about Fayetteville State University that I really did like is they had, they had some pretty outstanding music programs and the, the main like theater building where they did all the you know, theater and concert hall stuff was a short walk from my office. So what I would do is I would you know, catch up on work and then around you know, seven or 7.30, whenever it was, I would, I would head over and go to the performance and then you know, I'd go back home that night. And so I'm sitting there in my office and I'm working on something, I don't remember exactly what it was, and I noticed something happening and it is a little disconcerting. I noticed that there's water coming out of the wall 
And it's the wall that I share with my other uh, philosophy hire, Michelle Carpenter, who's not there. And at first it's like a couple little drops, dripping, beating up. And then it starts turning into a stream. And I'm like, oh, this, this looks bad. <laughs> so I'm in my office and I've got, you know, books on the floor and a carpet and, you know, my, my office chair in there. And so I, I scoop everything up. And just to be safe, I make sure that the bottom shelf of my bookshelf, I take those books and I put them up somewhere. I think maybe on my desk or on top of the bookshelf. And now the water is coming a little bit more steadily. It's turning into a stream and it's, you know, starting to flood my office. And so I'm like, well, this is actually pretty bad. So I call, I think security and they bounce me over to some maintenance person and the maintenance person on campus comes over or maybe, maybe it's the security person and they're looking in my room and they're like, Oh yeah, this is, this is bad. And you can like hear the water now, like rushing in the wall. What had actually happened was a pipe had burst the pipes that fed those sinks in our offices. One of those pipes, just, you know, random occurrence had burst. And now we can actually see water coming out into the hallway from my, uh, fellow philosophy professor Michelle's office, which is locked at this time. And the person unlocks it and opens it up. And there is like a pool of water on the floor that's coming out into the hallway. So I, you know, I say, is there a mop bucket around or something like that? And he tells me, yeah, go get a mop bucket. We figure out that. And I start mopping and I'm mopping in my room and then I'm mopping in Michelle's room. And it's just barely keeping pace with the amount of water water that's actually coming out. Now I've done a lot of janitorial work in my time and you know, whether you're a janitor or whether you're working in a restaurant or whether you're in the army, you learn how to use a mop and a bucket and to move pretty quickly if you need to. And so I'm keeping pace with this. And this, this other person is like, well, what are we supposed to do? So they call the, um, the people who are like the real maintenance, uh, engineers or whatever. And they're, they're living, you know, in a different city about 45 minutes away. I think it might've been Sanford or something like that. And they're like, well, listen, you know, we're, it's going to be a while before I can get there. I got to have you guys go do something. And so we lock up the offices and we're like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll do whatever you need done. And he says, you're going to have to go under the building and um, turn off a, a valve. We're like under the building. Do you mean in the basement? And he says, well, it's not exactly a basement. And here's where the story gets really kind of, kind of crazy. So we go down and, you know, there's some doors that have to be opened up because obviously they don't want like regular people going down there, uh, where this, um, underneath the building exists. And, you know, I'm from the Midwest, so I'm kind of used to buildings having basements or you can call them cellars, whatever you want. And they're usually poured concrete with cinder blocks. And very often we, you know, we take them and we turn them into rooms or play areas or storage areas. They, they get used as part of the house. And, you know, if there's a tornado, we go down in the basement. Well, the South is not like that. I mean, some parts of the South are, but large parts of the South are quite different for somebody from the Midwest. We go down and we open this thing up and we're now like in the bowels of the building, you know, where the foundation you, you would expect ought to be. And instead what we see is dirt. And it's not like a level dirt floor. It's more like, you know, there's, there's sort of like, there's, there's a big space, but the dirt floor has got like humps in it. Some of which are like four feet high and you know, it's a vast area. And then, you know, this guy's giving directions. He's like, okay, you got to go over and find the, the shutoff valve for this, this thing. And we're, we're, you know, scanning around with flashlights and we're like, what the hell is this? This is what's underneath the building. Where, where is the actual foundation for this? Did they just build this whole thing on dirt and it's managed to stay where it is all this time? You know, and we, of course we don't have time to answer those questions. Instead, we got to go and seek around and we're, we're tramping around in dirt and like dust is coming up as we're walking. 
Um, and, you know, we're like, I wonder if we're going to find anything down here, you know, something that we shouldn't find. And finally, we find the shutoff valve. And now there's a challenge, right? Because it's not easy to turn the thing. And finally, we succeed in turning the water off. And me and this other guy are looking at each other like, wow, this is some really shoddy construction stuff. What's going on with this, you know? So we, we head up and, and uh, get to my office and, um, you know, I start mopping up the rest of what's there. And then pretty soon the other guy shows up and, uh, and I, I'm curious. So I, I got to ask him, is this normal for buildings here on campus and like all around in Fayetteville, you know, that they don't actually have a concrete floor in the basement? And, and he says, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just the way it is for a lot of these buildings. And I was like, they do have a foundation, right? And he's like, yeah, in a manner of speaking, it kind of depends how old they are, what was done with them, who, who did it. You know, these, these aren't all up to code. And, uh, you know, the codes in that area are not really like the codes where I'm from that are a little bit more rigorous, you could say. And um, of course I missed the concert missed everything else. You know, I go home, get something to eat and, and that's about it. But it kind of stuck with me, you know, and as I'm sitting there in my office, um, and by the way, the wall was all messed up by that point. You know, they had to like fix parts of it and go in and, and tear the stuff out on Carpenter's side and re repair the pipes and all that before they, they put the water on. Um, fortunately, the, you know, I don't even think it was drywall as such. It was some kind of plasterish thing. Um, was really eroded by the water on her side. So it was really easy to tear out. And, you know, you, you get everything back on track, try to keep it from mildewing and molding. And, uh, you know, then everything's back to normal. But that stuck with me, you know. I, I knew that a lot of places in the South, because I lived in Carbondale, um, you know, in, in Southern Illinois, which is really Southern in, in its culture. And in its, you could say, in its architecture, and codes and things like that, I knew that things, you know, would, would be a little bit more lackadaisical the further south that you went. Um, but I, I, I didn't think that pertained to big public buildings like dorms. This was a dorm that people had lived in for decades and decades before it got turned into an office complex. So that's one of the many, many stories that I have about my three years down at Fayetteville State University, living in the city of Fayetteville and teaching all the different classes, mostly critical thinking that I did down there. This is the story, of course, of the burst pipes and the water invading the offices and the crazy dirt whatever you want to call it, the little uh, kingdom of dirt underneath the building that certainly wasn't a floor. It was more like walking around doing a hike uh, for what we were actually engaged in.